learners welcome to this session today we will be discussing the goa children's act 2003 and compare it with human trafficking in india you know we have seen the definition of human trafficking then we discuss the causes types of human trafficking and when we are discussing different legislations we have seen that we have discussed you know the constitution of india in terms of human trafficking and now we have started with the legislations so the goa children's act 2003 is a very powerful legislation to address the issue of human trafficking you know when we will discuss this legislation you will also agree to it that this is a state legislation but very powerful and very you know thoughtful while making this legislation so the purpose of this act is to protect, promote and preserve the best interest of children in Goa and to create a society that is proud to be child friendly. You know, you have a legislation for the protection of children, to protect the children from being trafficked from, being trafficked, you know, it's just that you are giving them so many rights you are protecting their right to education you are protecting their dignity you are protecting their worth you are giving them avenues to grow and develop as a good human being so this is very powerful legislation and child trafficking has been defined in this legislation 2z of the act says child trafficking means the procurement you are procuring somebody you are bringing somebody you are recruiting somebody you know you are transporting somebody you are transferring or harboring somebody or you are receiving so we have discussed the definition in the protocol just remember that you will find some linkages then you are receiving a child legally or illegally without within or across the borders and the means are very important you know you can recruit any person you can transport you can procure you can harbor you can receive any person but here the means matter a lot so the means are threat use of force other form of coercion abduction fraud or deception or I have a control on you, I am having a powerful position. So I make use of your vulnerability, my position of control over you and then I give somebody or I receive payments or benefits to achieve the consent of a person having control over another person for monetary gain or otherwise this is very important you know out of my sweet will I am not doing this I am earning a lot of money by selling you or by purchasing you I am getting my desires fulfilled desire can be in want of you know for labor for your organ for you know committing any crime for uh, be used as domestic help or you know to be used in pornographic websites to be used uh, for selling or purchasing it can be for drugs also it can be for anything but the purpose is always illegal the method is always illegal so the means are always illegal in this now you know to be defines a caregiver. A caregiver is a person who is responsible for looking after the well-being of the child. Just think about your parents. Just think about different institutions of shelter under the different legislations. This person may be a staff member of any residential facility for children, an employee of an educational institution, a nursery, a crèche, a clinic, a hospital, a sports club, a recreation facility or an employee of any facility which provides services to children. 
So, this is a very exhaustive definition of a caregiver and you know it fixes the responsibility of a caregiver because the caregiver has to look after the well-being of the child and well-being of the child means a lot. Then 2E defines child and you know child in cases of child labor shall be a person who has not completed his 14 years of age. So this is also very important that any child who has not completed his 14 years of age is child in case of child labor. Child labor has been defined in 2J. Child labor means all forms of labor involving children below the age of 14. Then 2JJ talks about commercial sexual exploitation of children which means any form of sexual exploitation of a child including visual depiction of a child engaged in explicit sexual conduct, real or stimulated or the lewd exhibition of the genitals intended for sexual gratification of the user done with the commercial purpose. So you cannot use the pictures, you cannot use genitals, you know, and just make it display the genitals or lewd exhibition is not allowed for the user done with the commercial purpose naturally you know the purpose is to earn money it is for commercial purposes to be sold on online porn sites or websites or to customers and you know people who buy sex whether for money or kind it includes implying allowing using inducing or coercing any child to engage in sexual conduct so now you understand that if this is all there then this is not a will of the child or the consent of the child it is out of his vulnerability that the child has been forced has been compelled you have been inducing the child you have been coercing the child or using the child to engage in sexual conduct it also includes the use of the child in assisting with other persons to engage in explicit sex. So if you use the child to assist any other person, that is also a crime under this section. Then 2LL talks about child in difficult situation. Child in difficult situation means a child which needs to be exposed to or is likely to be exposed to child abuse or sexual offenses or child trafficking or commercial sexual exploitation or violation of his or her right and when i talk about violation of rights it is includes the whole ambit of the constitution of india human rights arena and different legislations so this is a very good act wherein you know you talk about a child in difficult circumstances you not only talk about child trafficking sexual offenses child abuse or child being exposed to all these things but you include everything which is in violation of his rights then child abuse refers to maltreatment whether habitual or not of the child which includes any of the following psychological and physical abuse neglect cruelty sexual abuse and emotional maltreatment so you know sometimes people do argue that physically we did not torture the child but psychologically you had built so much of pressure on that child the family environment was not conducive for the child to develop or you know the environment in the captivity was such that it affected the psychology of the child it affected the emotional well-being of the child so that is all child abuse any act by deeds or words which debases degrades or demeans the intrinsic worth and dignity of the child as a human being so this is a entirely broad definition of child abuse so anything that is demeaning a child dignity or his worth anything you know with degrades or debases it will be included in child abuse so this is again an exhaustive definition of child abuse then unreasonable deprivation of his basic needs for survival such as food and shelter or failure to immediately give medical treatment to an injured 
child resulting in serious impairment of his growth and development or in his permanent incapacity or death. So this is another point. You know, if you unreasonably deprive a child for his basic need of shelter, home, food, well-being, then you come under this section. Or you just say that I will not provide you medical care, which is very important for the child's growth. Or, you know, something which can injure the child and then that injury can relate to permanent impact capacity or sometimes death also and you do not provide the child with medical help then this is a case of child abuse sexual offenses have been defined into why for the purposes of avoiding appropriate punitive action means and includes grave sexual assault grave sexual assault is very important you know which cover different types of intercourse it can be vaginal it can be oral or anal you know the children are very vulnerable their body parts are very sensitive so everything has been included use of objects with children forcing minors to have sex with each other is also punishable and under the grave sexual assault so deliberately causing injury to the sexual organs of the children making children pose or prone for pornographic uh, photographs or films and it also includes rape so you know when you force children to pose up for a video for a picture for using it on pornographic sites that is also covered under the grave sexual assault then sexual assaults which cover sexual touching with the use of any body part or object it can be voyeurism you know exhibitionism showing pornographic pictures or films to minors making children watch other engaged in sexual activity issuing of threats or sexually abuse a minor verbally abusing a minor using verbal vulgar and obscene language so you know the type of dignity which a child needs to be talked about is very important and has been discussed so if you will you know if you abuse a child if you just talk to him in a very undignified way you use obscene language or vulgar language you use something you know you show them pictures or you make them watch some videos or you just make them do it then that is all under sexual assault incest which is the commission of a sexual offense by an adult on a child who is relative or is related by ties of adoption so incest is something you know which is in a relationship so i totally trust you as my relative or you know you have adopted me and i just trust you and then you break my trust so this is also a sexual offense section 3 talks about rights of the child and it says the state shall ensure that children are protected from child abuse, sexual offenses, child trafficking, child prostitution and violation of their rights. I again said this is a very good legislation which always gives you an open ambit to include everything that can be included as a violation of child's right against exploitation and that they are given opportunity and facilities to develop in a healthy manner and in conditions of freedom and dignity and freedom and dignity you know are very elaborative terms so if you talk about section 3 one it is very exhaustive then section 3 6 talks about the proper implementation of the rights of child included in the convention and to prevent any discrimination exploitation or abuse of the child on any ground government shall take adequate measures so this is also very important that you have referred to the convention on the rights of child and you say that the proper implementation of the convention should be reflected in this section and in this legislation then 28 talks about the provision of the convention on the rights of child are taken as rights of the child in goa and are legally enforceable except where they pertain to the central government or to any other authority which is outside the purview of the state government 
provided that nothing in the section shall restrain the government from specifying higher standards for children and this is a very productive law this is a very positive law this is a very child friendly law because you have tried to implement the convention on the rights of child under this legislation for the state of goa 218 talks about every children home shall ensure that no child under its care or custody is exposed to child abuse as we say that you know children who are very vulnerable out of circumstances they are in need of care and protection or in conflict with law and then they approach and go to a place of shelter so that place of shelter should be a place where the child is safe is allowed to live with dignity and worth gets proper balanced diet and nutrition and grows to its fullest and not the place where the child is abused or sexual offenses take place all you know child prostitution or child trafficking is there so violation of its rights and that the best interest of the child are protected caregivers shall also be personally responsible for the same and so i say this is a very positive legislation where the caregiver has been entrusted with so much of responsibility of care of protection for these children Section 7 talks about child labor shall be prohibited in the state of Goa for all children who have not completed their 14th year of age. So it tries to implement the RTE Act, Right to Education Act and Article 21A and 21 of the Constitution of India where it prohibits that any child before the age of 14 years cannot be employed as labor. For the purpose of this act, child labor shall include all forms of hazardous employment, all forms of non-hazardous employment as defined in the Child Labor Prohibition and Regulation Act and Goa Daman and Due Shops and Establishment Act. All forms of domestic employment, which is very important, meaning employment in households, doing work of a domestic nature, either temporary, permanently, peace-related or part-time. So it can be peace-related, it can be part-time. So any domestic help where, you know, you have engaged a child can be under this section. All forms of self-employment, meaning labor such as rat picking, plastic bag selling, nut selling, running errands, carrying load of shoppers, etc. So it is an exhaustive definition of domestic employment, of self-employment and hazardous employment which is prohibited in the state of Goa under this legislation. All children who are identified as child laborers shall be immediately released therein and placed in a registered children home or a state-run institution or any other place identified under the plan of action. The state shall ensure that a satisfactory rehabilitation program is in position before taking action on this. So this is very important and helps in the reformation, rehabilitation and reintegration of such children. The punishment for contravention of this provision of this section shall be as under 50,000 of fine with simple imprisonment of one year for the employer in cases of hazardous employment. For all forms of non-hazardous employment, a fine of rupees 25,000 and simple imprisonment of three months for the employer. Very good. For all forms of domestic labor, a fine of rupees 50,000 for the person employing the domestic child labor. So I say this is a very positive law. 7.6 talks about a comprehensive plan of action to eradicate all forms of child labor in a phased manner. So the state has to formulate a comprehensive plan of action. The plan should include schemes for the identification. First you have to identify, you have to release, then you have to rehabilitate the child laborers, their education, integration into the society and imparting skill and vocational training to them for prevention of child labor. So you know you provide them skill, you provide them vocational training so that they are not employed again as child laborers or you, you know they are not trafficked again. 
for becoming a child labor child abuse and trafficking has been dealt under section 8 all children should be assured a safe environment a safe environment is an environment in which she or he will not be abused in any way and his or her development will be nurtured this is a very positive definition of you know bringing a safe environment for the child and what is safe environment then child trafficking shall be an offense punishable under this act any person who commits or aids or abets in a child trafficking shall be punishable with imprisonment for a term which may extend to seven years and with fine which may extend to one lakh and this is also very positive whoever commits any child abuse or sexual assault as defined under this act shall be punished with imprisonment either description of a term that may extend to three years and shall also be liable to fine of one lakh whoever commits any grave sexual assault shall be punished with imprisonment of either description of term that shall not less than 10 years but which may extend to life imprisonment so i say this is a very positive act because you know 10 years will be the minimum punishment and it can be extended to life imprisonment and shall also be liable to a fine of rupees 2 lakhs whoever commits incense shall be punished with imprisonment of either description of for a term that shall not be less than 10 years but which may extend to life imprisonment and also fine which may extend to 2 lakhs rupees statement of the child victim shall be treated on par with the statement of the child rape victim under section 375 of IPC as laid down by the Supreme Court of India. So you need not you know, have so much of evidences. If a child makes a statement that will suffice to punish the culprits. In cases of sexual assault of a child, the investigating authority shall ascertain the need of medical examination in consultation with the medical authority and in cases of child abuse or grave sexual offense a child such medical examination of the victim shall be compulsory done so if that is a grave sexual assault then medical examination is a mandatory requirement so now we have discussed the goa children act 2003 and we see it as a very protective legislation a very positive legislation a legislation which talks about incorporating everything as par with the convention on the rights of child so this is implemented in the state of goa but you know it caters to child trafficking in a much holistic way and it has been implemented properly in goa thank you all for this session and we will do join in the other session with other legislations. Stay safe.